Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Pray be in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm glad to see y'all up in here. Uh, now let me remind you before we get started that uh, Brother Lewis uh, Boyd's visitation is tonight from 6 to 8 at the Hunter Funeral Home. And his uh, uh, funeral, thank you, his funeral will be in the morning at 10 o'clock at First Baptist Church in Atlanta. So uh, if you uh, want to go, well, that's the time and the dates and the places. So if you're able to go, uh, good thing about having service early, we'll be able to get to the funeral home that whoever wants to go uh, tonight. So uh, y'all keep that family in your prayers. Uh, I'm going to be singing a few songs and uh, give you a chance to testify. So uh, get the testimony <coughs> ready if you have one or a praise or just whatever you want to share with the church. And, uh, and uh, we give you an opportunity to do that tonight. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with a word of prayer. Father God, we love you and we praise your holy name. And, we just thank you, Lord, for, for, for your goodness. God, we, sometimes we forget how good you are to us. Sometimes we forget how richly blessed we are. Sometimes we look around and just see that others seem like they have more than we do or, or, or get to do more and, and are always going and doing it. And, and, and it's easy to be jealous of that, Lord, when all the time the Lord blesses us with, with health. He blesses us with, with a, a roof over our heads. He blesses us with food. He blesses us with family. He blesses us with love. And, and we take those things so for granted. God, help us not to do that anymore. Help us to rejoice and bask in what you have given us, God, for you see us where we are. You've put us where we are. And, God, we know that uh, you're going to take care of us because that's who you are. And we praise you for that. We just pray, Lord, your, your, uh, your, to, for your spirit to fill this place tonight, that everyone would feel your presence, God, that you would be honored and praised and glorified. For, Lord, you're worthy. That's why, I hope that's why everyone's here, is to give you honor and praise and to hear your word. And God, <coughs> to sing and rejoice. We lift up this family, Lord, that's uh, lost a loved one to death. And, and God, we all that have experienced that, know what it means to lose someone that we love. And so we just pray, God, for your your hand to be upon them, God, and, and for them to feel your peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And God, it, it helps, it really does, to know that Brother Lewis uh, is in glory with you, that he loved you, he served you, he, he worshiped you, he adored you, he studied your word. He was a good man, God, and he, he was a good man, not 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 just because he was a man, but because he knew you. And God, I thank you for that. And I just pray, God, that you bless Sister Judy and that family, God, as, as they mourn and as they uh, people come together tonight to greet them and, and, and lift them up and, and to comfort them, Lord, I just pray, God, that they would receive that and, God, that they would receive your peace that passes all understanding. God, once again, we love you and praise you. And we thank you for all these that are here tonight. And God, that uh, you would bless, richly bless each and every one. Bless this time of worship and praise and, and, uh, and bless your word. And we're going to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your a little, little hymn book, <clears throat> turn to page number 33. I tell you what, why don't we stand up? We're going to sing Onward Christian Soldier. <laughs>
Daddy, would you give us some word of prayer, please? I have a call to thank you for this day and just thank you for being blessed to be here. Share upon us this day and just thank you, Lord, for the best of being able to be in the house of God this night, Lord. And may we all come to lift your name up in word and in song, Lord, and just praise you in your name for all things that you bring us, Lord, for the all good things come from thee on high, Lord. And Lord, we just pray. For each one this day, Lord, that needs prayer, to lift them up to you, Lord, that you just might touch them and comfort them, Lord, or cheer them, or whatever the need might be, Lord. Yes. That you might meet that need and post your love and your mercy. And Lord, just continue to be with our first responders and service people, Lord, for they are, Lord, that they might just keep them safe and bring them back home safe. Lord. And just go with us now for the remainder of this service. And just continue to be with us as we go our ways. Also, Lord, in life, that we might be a witness as you have in your world. We be here for you all the Lord pray forever. Amen. 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 God bless our troops and our first responders. Bless them all. Uh, who has a testimony you'd like to share tonight? Ain't no time like right now. Yes, sir. Brother, I want to say that I love the Lord and I'm thankful. For everything he's done for me, and this is another one of those little stories, not about the golf cart, but this morning, reading the Bible and praying some before coming to Sunday school, I said, Lord, I've had this cold now about three weeks, and I've been asking you to heal it, take it away from me. And I said, I just don't understand why it don't just go. The cold's no big deal. And you know what I heard clear as a bell? Maybe that's the only way I can get you to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, Lord, <laughs> I, hope, I hope that I'll do better in the future so you don't have to do something like that to get my attention. <laughs> unless something like, but anyway, I just want to say that the Lord has been good to me beyond measure. I, I've got way more than I deserve and I've been, a, I've been blessed uh, my entire life, my entire life is, as up and down as this being, coming from a non-Christian family, three brothers, and uh, older brothers that have all passed on, and uh, I just can't thank the Lord enough. I'm trying to make it a habit, a rule of my house of me. Every morning when I raise up, turn over and put my feet on the floor, just to say, thank you, Lord, Amen. for another day. Give me another shot at it. So that's all I've got to say, but I'm, I'm telling you, I, I hope the Lord doesn't, doesn't have to make us sick to get us to talk to him. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that still, small voice tells us things we really don't want to hear, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes it's pretty hard. Yeah. I want to, I love, we've talked about it before, we talked about a little bit of the last Sunday about God's providence, how he works, and and, and it's so easy to look back and see it, but you know, and I was thinking today, if, if good Lord hadn't led Donna to come here to this church, and and and, and had her give, have the decision to join it, and kind of shamed me a bit because I knew what I should be doing. And if I hadn't got involved with the, with the church like it was, and and really had a got a really better grasp of the of the Holy Spirit, not thinking it was going to make me run around and talk funny and stuff. Um, and, and God used the bad circumstances with my father-in-law to, to put me and my granddaughter together in one room for almost two hours uh, that doesn't normally happen. And if I hadn't been filled with the Spirit and, and was able to answer a few questions that she had about, about God and how He works and the, and the plan and how it was, how it was designed and and, I, and God got to, was able to use an old dummy like me. I might not have went and seen my granddaughter join the church this morning mm -hmm. and be saved last night. And uh, it's just it's just amazing how things come together. And I, I know what you said. It's it's really important that we see God as He's happening. But sometimes it's just too complicated to see <laughs> it when it's going on. Yeah. But uh, but I can see God in, in every every piece of it. And, Right. Amen. It might have been all for that. Who who, who knows those answers? But uh, praise the Lord. It's it's yeah. 
It's unique. Amen. It's like our God. Amen. Amen. He is a unique one, isn't he? Someone else. I want to stand up and say praise the Lord and thank you for this sermon this morning. I've heard them several times. And thank you moms that all pray for their youngness because I know I've been one for many years and my kids are back in church thanks to being on my knees all the time. But they're back in church and been back in church for years. Praise the Lord. Amen. Doing job doing God's work and I just so thankful and I'm thankful for the sermons and reminding us, you know, and teaching other ones, younger ones, what they need to be doing for the kids and helping them. Amen. And I love this church. I love everybody in it. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Just don't realize the value of, of a weeping mother or dad that just earnestly prays to the Lord for the salvation of their kids and I know a lot of us today are in here right now because of that very reason. So thank God for that. Yeah, we do need to do that a lot. Someone else? I'm going to praise the Lord tonight because my mama prayed for me. Mm -hmm. If it hadn't been for my mama, seven <clears throat> bottles of prescriptions and a fifth of whiskey would have took this one out. So praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want to jump back up and say something else to add it to mine. <laughs> we got some other. My son, which is my oldest, would not have a second child. He didn't want to bring him to the world because the world was so bad. And when he got back right with the Lord, then they had the second child. <laughs> They're years apart, but it's wonderful. I mean, you know, but he wouldn't have to. He didn't want to bring a child in this world as bad as it was. But once he got back with Jesus and got everything right, it was good again. Amen. Yeah. When we learn to quit living for this world and live for the God that created it, changes everything, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Makes everything look different. Amen. Amen. This is our good Sunday, stuff. Our Sunday school class was so good today, too. Everybody participated in it, and it was talking about the value of life. All, all, all life is valuable. And means something, and we see we talked about the abortion <coughs> of millions. Jim read the statistics of the millions of babies that had been aborted that we know of. It's just astounding. Mm -hmm. And you think about all those babies now; they're in in heaven. <coughs> Amen. It's sad. Over what 62 million since Roe versus Wade, 1973. It's, it's le the sin of it alone has lessened the population of the United States for people 55 and younger because of it. That's a, that's a, a fifth of the population of the United States today have been murdered since 1973. Think, we, think about that. Like Anita said, the ones we know about. The ones we know about. <laughs> just, think, just let that sink into your mind. A fifth. <laughs> You know, the Bible tells us in the, in the end time in the, when the, the vials are open that a third of the world is going to be destroyed, killed, a third of men, mankind going to die. Well, a fifth of it in this country has been killed since 1973. Isn't that the, <clears throat> whatever. Brother, I would add one more thing. Uh, I read on social media that we're living it different from a guy that lived in uh, communist Germany, I believe, or communist, maybe in Russia, I'm, but anyway, he said, we're at the day and time now where one-third of the people will kill one-third of the people and the other third will watch. Mm -hmm. And we're living in that day, brother. It, it, I'm not a doomsday prophet by any means, but I'm telling you, we're living in a day when people don't consider life it's worth anything. They don't, they don't understand the God that we serve. And, and it just, things like that jump out at me and stick in my mind. And when you start thinking a third of the people will kill a third of the people and a third will watch. That's mind boggling to me. That, what a horrible situation. Yeah. What a terrible generation that has come up, that has come along. And I, I pray about it at my house right now. I know the, 
I know the Lord hears me because he talked to me pretty regularly <laughs> about what I need to do and things I need to work on. And uh, I, I'm just astounded at this, but I'm not giving up. Bob and I went and ate lunch today, and, and uh, he kind of got a little bit of my opinion, which he, he made a mistake and asked me something. But uh, I believe we've rushed into this end time too quick. I, I understand it's coming. Good, like it or not, it's coming. Our Lord's coming back. We just don't know when. <clears throat> and right now, throughout the world, there seems to be a move of the Spirit of God moving in this world, not just the United States. But I heard, I read where I ran is even having a, a movement in their country wanting to seek a Christian religion. And of course, the Ayatollah is going to have nothing to do with it. He'll kill all of them or unless they get rid of him. But that's neither here nor there. Not only Iran, it's going on in China, Hong Kong, uh, all over the world. I'm telling you that we know by the truth of the word that before the Lord comes back, there's going to be a great falling away. Absolutely. There's going to be a great revival to go with But we know, brother, I'm telling you, that's going on as we speak. Amen. This whole world has been shaken to the, to the uh, ear by the earlobe. This is happening right now in front of us, and it's going to happen. I won't be predictive and say when. We don't know when. It could be 100 years from now. Yeah. There's no telling how many people can be saved between now and then. We've got to treat each day like it's the last one. Absolutely. That's what I was going to say. You you live in the present day, not the future Right. Day. Amen. So you live for today and you do you do God's bidding in today's world. And today is the day of salvation. That's what the Bible says. Today is the accepted time. It's today and tomorrow will be today. When tomorrow gets here to be today and we to, we're to live for God that way every day. And, and when we start trying to forecast what he's going to do, we already found out through history, we're not real good at that. Amen. We're not real good at figuring out how God's going to do something. We think we are, but we're not. And when it, all through history and in Scripture, when God did something that caught people completely dumbfounded, except a few prophets that was prophesying how this was going to take place, and sometimes they didn't even realize how God was going to make happen what they were predicting. Of what they were prophesying. So we have to be careful about trying to say we got it all figured out, but we do not. We need to live one day at a time, reach one soul at a time, win as many people for Christ as we can, and live our lives as a light in this world of darkness. And that light that shines from us is the light that dwells in us, which is Christ Jesus. And that's the way we got to live every day. And that's what our, our purpose is here. Someone else testified. This is some good stuff right here. Well, I'll, I'll say I love the Lord. I wanted to say too, uh, of course, I just made a trip to St. Louis and back. It's like nine, eight, eight or nine hour drive. I had a safe trip other than one big tractor trailer trying to drive in my lane too. <laughs> that I was beside, but, and I didn't have no road right there, but I said, why don't you get in your own lane? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I, I wanted to say that the company that I work for, there's about 185 people there. And our, co our company has a, they'll start the meetings off with, a, with prayer, and they end with prayer. And, uh, <coughs> you know, in the meals they have prayer and everything. And they have a little uh, fellowship. It's optional at 6.20 in the morning for, you know, both two days of uh, we had meetings, and uh, it's optional. And there was about, we sat in a little room, you know, about 20 people. The first day was about 20, second day about 15. But, but I, I just, it's uh, nice to, to see that kind of thing going on in the in the big company. Amen. Yep, it is. You know, and, and uh, we we have some discussion. We. Say the Lord's prayer, and we have some prayer and, and prayer uh, requests and stuff like it, kind of like what we do in Sunday school. And uh, and I just really appreciate it. That, you know, there's 185 people and 20 people, not very many out of that group, but at least uh, and you now they have open bar every night, you know, and, and a lot of, a lot of drinking and stuff like it goes on. But uh, but the uh, I got I outside of 
that little fellowship, I did get to visit with some other Christian people, you know, and, and get to know them better and talk about Christ and stuff, and, and that was enjoyable. But uh, I, I'm just really happy that I do work for a good company. Amen. And made a safe trip. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's uh, turn to page number 92 and uh, be thinking about somebody else wants to testify. We're going to give you another opportunity. Sing Victory in Jesus. And by the way, 92. Yeah. <laughs> since they've started being able to feed him. Mm -hmm. And um, they plan on going ahead and going through that surgery on the 30th. So just the uplifted spirit because of the fact that he's getting his nutrition now. And he's starting Amen. to praise, praise the Lord. Amen. He's starting to get the nutrition he needs. Amen. Amen. Come on out. <laughs> me. <laughs> it's me. Uh, you know, every family goes through trials and 
tribulation and it's uh, never an easy thing to do. But I would like to praise God that this Christmas everybody was present and we got to have a really, really good Christmas. Amen. 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 Yeah, you don't realize how important that is until families are fighting and feuding and you can't get together anymore. And what a beautiful thing when when there's healing in the family and families come back together and they're able to laugh with joy and because God put it, you know what? One of the things we didn't choose is what family we're in. Right. God chose that for us and he put us there for a specific purpose. He leads you to the church you go to, but he puts you in the family you're born into. Amen. <laughs> he gave you the soul for that, that family. He gave it to you <coughs> and he gave your parents uh, the gift of a child and he put you and me in their care and he puts our children in our care he does that by design and specifically we need to remember that when we when we think we can't get along with our family because he put us together and we need to keep it that way amen amen that's a part of our part and I tell people all the time well you just don't know my sibling I, you know I say this all the time. Somebody's got to be the Christian in the house. Amen. Amen. Somebody's got to be the Christian and bite their tongue and 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 help things to go smoothly. And turn the other cheek. A turn the other cheek. Yeah, sometimes you have to turn it three or four times and and bend over and let them kick you a few times and get up and grin about it. And <coughs> you know what? Uh, God puts us there for a reason. And I think it it, it was blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. All right, someone else. You know, talking about being being blessed in family and everything, you know, what if you've been born in Iran? Something mm. like that. You know, we are blessed. Amen. Yeah. God put it all where we are. Brother, I heard a saying uh, years, I don't know why it just came to my mind, but uh, the saying is, he that <coughs> says he has no problem has another <laughs> yeah. yeah, he has another problem. He yeah. don't think he got any, doesn't he? Amen. All right, yes, ma'am. I know last, I guess it was last Sunday night, I was telling y'all about my, my mom who got killed in a car wreck four years ago. But when Kim said something about family, it made me think about this, and I shouldn't have left this out because it was a blessing from God. Not that our family had been at odds with each other. My dad passed away when I was six. Uh, and I have two sisters and a brother. And we all live in different towns. Uh, you know, just, I don't know, San Antonio, Dallas, Little Rock, you know, not too far away. But um, it had been years since all my siblings and at least one of my parents had been together. You know, like one of my sisters may go visit mom or daddy. They had been divorced for years, and then, or maybe others, but all of us together. Um, the weekend, my mom was killed on a Tuesday morning, but the weekend before that, um, we all, all my siblings and my mom, went to Little Rock to visit my brother and his wife. And we spent Thursday night through Sunday together under the same roof, just singing like we all did when we were young and together, you know, and God knew what was fixing to happen. We didn't, but he did, mm -hmm. and it was, um, it was just a wonderful time, you know, of being together, sleeping under the same roof and doing things together and laughing. And uh, he knew she was fixing to be taken to her permanent home. And, you know, we could not, for, we'll never forget that, how mm -hmm. you guys sat together just a few days before. Amen. Yeah, it's wonderful to be able to remember that time that you had, that special time that you had, a special memory. Thank God for that. Amen. Someone else? All right, let's turn to page 104. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. And by the way, Blaine has picked out all of our songs tonight. And so uh, thank you for doing that. They're, they're good ones. Amen. I love to see when young people love the old hymns, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey. 
Brother Johnny Crow, you leave the word, bro. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for this day, dear Lord, and the opportunity to come again to your house, dear Lord, and study your word, dear Lord. Dear God, I just thank you for each one that's here this morning, dear Lord, and dear God, and what they mean to me, dear Lord. And dear God, we just thank you for bringing Gary safely back to us and other people that we have in our church is traveling, dear Lord. Just watch over them, dear God, and bring them, bring them home safely to us. And dear God, be with those that was requested this morning on our prayer list, dear Lord. We just lift them up to you with their many needs, dear God. And dear God, your will will be done, dear Lord. Dear God, the families that lost the Pattersons and, and the boys, dear Lord, be with those families, dear God, that lost loved ones, dear Lord. Just be with them through these times, dear God. And dear Lord, just be with our church, be with our pastor, and thank you so much for him and his wife, dear Lord, and what they mean to this church. Dear Lord, just I just pray, dear God, that we'll keep focused on you, dear Lord. Be the church, dear Lord, that you want us to be, dear God, that we'll be a lighthouse in this area, dear God. Dear Lord, be with our first responders. Be with our military personnel around the world, dear God. Just watch over them, dear Lord, because they're in troubled times, dear Lord. Just keep a protecting hand upon them, dear Lord, and bring them back home to their loved ones. Be with their loved ones here at home, dear God, to make the sacrifice, dear Lord, that allow those men and women to be abroad, dear Lord, protecting us and keeping our freedom free, dear Lord. Dear God, just forgive me of all my sins. Thank you for all the blessings you've given me. Ask to all these things your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen I need some scripture readers. It will get your hand up. Sister Jody, could you read for me Romans uh, chapter 7, verses 21 through 25? <laughs> Someone else? Need some more. Who wants to read, Brother Johnny? Uh, 2 Peter 2 and 9. <coughs> Anyone else? Sister Jean? Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 13. Jeremiah, I saw your hand up. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. I got one more. Who wants it? Brother A.D. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 10 through 18. You get the long one tonight. Amen. You know, I, I'm surprised that my wife didn't stand up and tell you how beautiful my grandson is. But that's okay that she did. You've got time if she wants to do that. He favors his papa. <laughs> you mean so, anyway, so y'all know how pretty he is already. Maybe that's why she wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know he's pretty. I've seen pictures. Anyway, pretty no little like I don't know when John's ever going to be back. That boy's on cloud now, and I don't know when he's going to drift back down to earth. But anyway, and uh, Jessica's doing good and just as pretty as ever. You go in there now when women have a child and they look just as pretty as they did. But when you seen them in church, they had just a mind-boggling thing anyway. And the, the word, how far they've come and that kind of stuff now. Amen. So uh, I'm glad that they have come that, that, that way. And I'm glad it makes it easy on mama and the baby. And so uh, anyway, it's a blessing uh, to, to have a, a Terry boy. First one out of eight grandkids, a Terry boy. Isn't that something? Finally got you a man-child. A oh, man-child. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. You know, this morning we, we, we were studying in Psalm 56, and, and at the end of that, uh, that uh, scripture this morning, uh, verse 13 was the uh, last scripture in that, uh, our last verse in that psalm. It says, For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? And we all sin, we all know that. And uh, it's nothing to, for us to brag about. It's not. It should never be said in a bragging <coughs> way. It should be done in a, in a shameful way. But we are all sin. Uh, we all sin, and that is not a, a brag. It is a fact. It's a fact of Scripture that that's who we are. We're born in sin, and we're shaping in iniquity. Uh, you don't have to teach a child to be bad. You got to teach a child to be good. So we're born that way. It's it's in our. Uh, who we are and so because of the fall uh, of man and so uh, some sin is accidental you know sometimes you don't sin on purpose you just do it and I hate it when that happens don't you now <laughs> some some sins though are done on purpose I hate it worse when that happens amen uh, some sin only happens one time some sin happened repetitively. And I want to talk to you tonight about uh, the repetitive sin 
that we have in our lives and how we're supposed to deal with repetitive sins. That sin that you repeat over and over and over. And how many of you, I don't want you to raise your hand right now, I just want you to think. How many of you have ever had a repetitive sin in your life or has one in your life now? And you can just pick, just take your pick of, of any of the sins listed in the Bible and sometimes we have them. And I partic in particular had one that, that haunted me through life until a, a certain day when uh, the Lord took that sin from me. And uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it, it, all sin is the same. It has to be dealt with with confession and with repentance. And it has to be forgiven by God. It has to be covered in the blood of, of the Lamb. And, uh, and so the repetitive sin is the same way. But sometimes if we're not careful, we're guilty of just praying uh, for forgiveness of a repetitive sin. Is that good enough? Does God forgive you of a repetitive sin? Yeah. Oh yeah. You remember what he told Peter? Peter asked him, he said, Lord, how often should I forgive my brother? Seven times? Remember that? And he said, no, Peter, seven times 70. In other words, you just keep forgiving. Keep... God does us that way. But why would we want to continue on with a, a sin that we know we have and, and you'll try to fight it in your own power and you can't overcome it. It will rear its ugly head despite anything you can do. There it is again and you yield to it and you feel horrible. How many of you ever, ever felt that way? Yeah, you feel horrible, but you've done it. And so what do we do? How do we pray for the repetitive sin? We, don't, we quit praying for forgiveness and we start praying for deliverance. Amen? We start praying to, for God's sake. You remember the, the, the prayer that Jesus told his disciples to pray? Amen? You remember? Well, how did he say to address evil? Lord, deliver me from evil. And so when we have a repetitive sin that we just continue to do over and over and over and systematically, and, you know, sometimes we might get enough victory over it, we might go for a long time before it happens again. And then sometimes it happens very frequently. These are repetitive sins I'm talking about. And so we need to pray for the deliverance of God to give us victory. We saw that song a while ago, Victory in Jesus. And Jesus can give you victory, deliverance over any sin in your life. He can forgive the accidental. He can forgive the, the one time only sin. And he can help you overcome and deliver you from the repetitive sin. Think about that. And, and I know we, we don't seem to want to classify sin, but the Bible does that for us, whether you know it or not. And not only that, it, 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 it lists punishments for various sins. And sometimes the punishment is worse than it is at other times. You try to figure that out, I ain't gonna try because that's God's business, amen? And he knows what we need. So. So we need to talk about the deliverance that we need, uh, not just the forgiveness, but we also need the forgiveness, but we need the deliverance so our witness can be effective. Effective. Amen? Because when you have a, a repetitive sin in your life, nobody else may not even know about it. And then there are repetitive sins that everybody sees. But there's other sins that maybe nobody but you and the Lord knows about don't think the one that everybody don't know about don't affect your witness as bad as the one everybody knows about. Amen. Amen. It affects you and your psychic and you don't even feel worthy That's right. to witness to somebody because you keep reminding yourself of what you've done. Amen. Amen. So it, it, it has an effect on us. So here's the big thing that we need to all understand. We need, here's the question. Who can deliver me from this sin? On this repetitive sin. Joe, you've got Romans chapter 7, verses 21 through 25. Read that for us, please. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. <laughs> for in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me 
from this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself, in my mind, am I a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Amen. Amen. Think about that. Paul described this as good as you'll ever read it anywhere. He describes who we are. He describes it. Now, if the great apostle Paul had this issue, we do too. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, the apostle Paul was a man like any other man. He was a sinner like any other sinner. And, and he, he, he worked so hard and so diligently for the ministry and the mission of God that he went around and he just he just took all kinds of punishment. He didn't he didn't care what they did to him. If they stoned him and they didn't kill him, he was gonna get up and start praising God. They put him in prison, they beat him. No matter what he did, he came on out the other side proclaiming Jesus Christ. Why? Because he had met him. Amen. We all need to meet Jesus. Amen. We all need to meet Jesus. But even with that, with, with Paul knowing that that. Here's what he tells the Romans because he knew the Romans, you know, the Roman people in their day is very similar to the Americas of today. Amen? We're a world power. We're a, a mighty military force. And the Roman people, let, when they took over nations, they didn't take over their religions. They let them keep their... They do that in America. Amen? When we bring these people over here, no matter what they want to worship, we, they do it. And, and so we're very similar to that Roman Empire. So he's trying to explain sin and righteousness and holiness to a people who live this way. Kind of like trying to get out there to people who are, are, are ungodly, who don't ever don't know anything about God, and try to tell them about who God is and about sin. They don't understand. So Paul's trying to help us understand. Uh, see, he says, now if I do that, I would not... Uh, he said, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is always there with me. Wow. That's the way we all are, isn't it? Have you ever tried to do something good and it turned into something bad? Have you ever tried to encourage somebody and the, your words got twisted around where they took an insult from it? That happens to me a lot. Amen. You can, despite your best effort, sometimes there's always evil that's present with us. And, and he said, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And he said, but I see something else inside of me, in my members. I see something else in my mind. And it brings me into captivity. Because sometimes it harnesses, it handcuffs all of us, sin in our lives. Paul saw that in his own lives. His own life. He saw it in his own life. And he said, he said that this law is sin, which is in my members. And he calls himself a wretched man. Ooh, if Paul was a wretched man, what kind of man am I? Amen. What kind of people are we if Paul was wretched? You know, and you think about that. And he said, but he asked the question that, that I asked while ago. Who shall deliver me who shall deliver me from the body of this death from this law that works in my members the law of sin is always present with me who can deliver me from that and he gives a quick answer doesn't he amen he does he said I thank God through Jesus Christ my Lord I can be delivered. Now that's the same thing that applied to Paul then applies to me and you today. If you need deliverance from a repetitive sin, you're going to be delivered by Jesus Christ in no other way. You have to call on his name. You have to mean it. When he delivered me from mine, I was crying and praying and he just took it away. Thank God. Amen. Amen. He just took it. Amen. It was a private thing. But he took it. And I praise him for that. 
And I'm telling you, it works if we can do that. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so that with my mind I will serve God. It's a battle of our mind. We have to learn to control with our mind the yearnings of our flesh. That's what he's trying to tell us here. Because the, 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 the war that's with him, the evil that's always present with him, is sins of the flesh that he's talking about. And so we have to understand that. And so, and now the flesh is, is a broad area. The flesh includes the tongue, by the way. <clears throat> Don't forget that. Amen. Yeah. Every time you mention sins of the flesh, everybody says we're talking about sexual sin. Not always. Matter of fact, probably less than the, the, the thing we say. The gossip, the covetousness, the slander, all of those things are probably way more prevalent in our lives than sexual sin is. Amen? Amen. And I think if the truth was told for 90% of Christian people who try to keep themselves uh, holy sexually, they have a harder time keeping that mouth shut than anything else. Oh, I see people like, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we all got this trouble, don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not any exception. I have that trouble too. Amen. And so uh, I thank God, though, that we can be delivered from this, but it has to be done by Jesus Christ. He can give us the deliverance from this. The, any sin that you have that's repetitive, that you want to get rid of, you got to call on his name, you got to mean it, you got to confess it, you got to repent, you do it with tears, you do it with sorrow, you do it with penance, and he'll hear every bit of it, and he will empower you to do that. Right. Amen. You believe it? Brother Gary, can you imagine going up before the Lord for judgment, and he brings up everything that you said that hurt somebody, and how it affected that person? Yeah. 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 yeah, we're not going to have to imagine it's going to happen. So we have to be really, really careful about those things. We really do. All right, so who can deliver us? We have to turn it over to Jesus Christ. Now, another thing you have to be willing to do, you have to learn to trust God with everything. Now, it's easy to say that. I trust you, God, with everything. And then something goes haywire, and what do we do? We try to fix it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> How many of you ever done that? And usually when I try to fix something on my own power, I make a bigger mess out of it. Amen? And so we have to, we have to trust the Lord and be willing. Now, let, now, you have to understand this. When you bring your repetitive sin before the Lord for deliverance, and you ask Him to deliver you from that sin, you have to be prepared for what he's going to do to deliver you from that sin. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Yeah. And it you might not be how we think it's going to take place. Well, we would love it if he just reached down there and go, it's gone. But that ain't where it works. It? Sometimes you lay flat to your back in, in a hospital bed. Sometimes you lay flat to your back in a, in a jail cell. Hmm? Sometimes somebody just beats the daylights out of you, huh? Because he knows what it's going to take to deliver you from this, so you better be ready when you ask him to do it and prepare because he knows what it's going to take to cure the problem. Yeah? You know, you know, Paul had this idea that this stuff was ever present with him, and everywhere he went, he wound up in a heap of trouble, you know? He didn't have time to worry about the present sin. He was too busy fighting for his life. So just think about this. I won't really want you to read these scriptures. There's two of them that goes here. Uh, uh, Johnny, you've got 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. All right, so he, uh, the, the, the first part of that is what I want you to understand. He knows how to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment. But look at the first part. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Amen? Now, <coughs> he's already told us that he don't mind chastising us. He says, I do that because I love you. And sometimes God puts us in the most peculiar and sometimes awful places. So we look up at him. Mm -hmm. 
So we see him, so we call on him, so we cry out to him. And so when he gets ready to deliver you, he knows how to do that. And it don't say here what he does, because every situation requires him to act differently to an individual. That's why sometimes what works for Brother Gary may not work for Brother David. It may not work for Sister Donna. But God knows us because we're all so different. He knows what to do in order to achieve what you've asked Him to do. Amen? So we have to be willing for this. The other scripture, uh, Sister Jean has it. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Would you read that one for us, please? There has no good way to take it Amen. So one of the things that God does is when you are tempted with this sin, He makes a way for you to escape. Now that sounds foreign to us sometimes, don't it? And so if you've got a repetitive sin as a personal sin, how do you escape that? How does He make that way? For one thing, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, He will, He will, I'm going to tell you what He did me. I would come under so much conviction, it would make my ears turn red. Amen? And if it was one that everybody could see, He's fixing to call, He's going to call you out on it. Right in front of everybody. He's going he to get make a way. He, and, and so he gives you this out, and we have to learn to take the out that God gives us. That there is no temp temptation taken you, but such as is com common to man. We are all tempted, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape. What's our way? Always our way of escape. Jesus Christ. Remember that. If you can do something brashly, knowing Christ is looking at you, you know, that's another way to help yourself when you have this repetitive sin. Right When you're tempted to do it, think, Christ is right here looking at me. And then if you go on to do it, you're in trouble. Amen? This is what He, he provides for us. He, and it sounds... Silly, because God's way is not our way. Amen? He, he don't do things the way we do. He deals with the inner man. He deals with your mind. He deals with your heart. Now, He can deal with you physically if He wants to. And He has in the Scripture. You look in the Scripture and, and some of the things He's done to people. It was spooky. Amen? To get them to a right place with Him. So you have to be prepared for this. So you got to trust God that whatever he does to you will help deliver you from this sin that's, that's tormenting you. The third one, the Lord not only delivers us from the evil works of others, but also from our own evil works. So we're not only protected from the evil of others, we have to protect ourselves sometimes from our own selves. That's strange sounding, isn't it? That we have to be protected from ourselves. Jeremiah, you got 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 7. <coughs> verse 7? Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. I'm okay. <laughs> Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now Paul's talking here about a man who had given him some grief. A man named, uh, we didn't read about him, but his name's Alexander. He's a coppersmith, and he's, in, he's actually in Ephesus where Paul encountered him, where Paul was trying to, to, to tell people about Jesus Christ, and many people were being converted. And this coppersmith, you know what his trade was? He made idols. He got into this man's pocketbook. So this man started a revolt in Ephesus about the, the goddess Diana because that was their chief goddess and their chief idol. And he began to call all the people together and, and promote Diana. And they turned on Paul. I mean, they turned on him. 
They won't hear about God no more. They had something they could look at, made out of copper. This is our God. This is our goddess. This is who we worship. You are in a heap of trouble, buddy. Mm -hmm. And Paul, Paul saw this and going on. And he, in verse 14, he says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his work. So Paul didn't take it out on him. He said, let the Lord handle this guy. Amen? Amen. And then, then he says that when he, he was confronted, he stood all by himself. He was alone. Nobody stood up for him. He had given them a new gospel, a new religion about a new Savior named Jesus. Nobody stood up for him, didn't know nothing about him. And didn't want to know nothing about him after all this took place. And so he said, he said, uh, so at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. He wants to blame Alexander, but not the people that didn't stand with me, because they did they did out of ignorance. He said, But the Lord stood with me. What I'm telling you while I go, be acutely aware that God is ever present, He's always with you wherever you are. No matter what you're saying, no matter what you're doing, he's right there looking. He's right there listening. He's right there taking notes. <laughs> Think about this. So when you have this repetitive sin and this problem in your life, don't think God don't know everything that you're doing and everything about it. So when he goes to deliver you, he wants you to know that. And then he says uh, that he, he, he thought they were going to put him in a lion's den but uh, the, the Lord delivered him from that out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. So every evil work from outside, the Lord will deliver Paul and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. You know what? That goes along with what David said this morning. I don't fear anything man can do to me. What Paul said, he wasn't scared of them. Because God preserved him. God would deliver him all the way to glory. Amen. Amen. That's what the Paul did. Remember what Paul said? He said, if they kill me, I'm going to paraphrase this, I'm just going to go be with Jesus. But if they let me live, I'm going to proclaim Jesus. Amen. That's the kind of man that we're, that we're talking about here. And that's the attitude we need to have. He was always aware that Christ was with him. He was always aware that the Lord had his back. He was always aware that the Lord would deliver him. And he knew nothing was going to happen to him until his time came. He knew that. Amen? I got one more and then we're going to dismiss. Now, how does God, how did God do this? There's, a, there's an explanation of all of, all of that took place to cause this to happen. It's in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 10 through 18. Brother A.D., would you read that for us, please? For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, <clears throat> to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For so much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to succour them that are tempted. Thank God. Listen to that, what he just said. 
that, that Jesus Christ had come. He came <coughs> and, he, and He made many sons. He was the captain of our salvation. He was made perfect through sufferings. And He that sanctifieth and they that are sanctified are all one. We're the ones that are sanctified. He's the one that sanctifies us. Amen. He has set us apart. He has made us one. And he's not ashamed of us. Even though he knows we're still imperfect. He knows we're... I thank God he uses imperfect people still. Don't you? Amen. Hallelujah. I told me the need we're talking about this coming up here. If he didn't use imperfect people right now, we would have none of us be sitting here tonight. Amen. I sure Amen. wouldn't be standing up here in front of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. He uses imperfect. And he tells you here why. He tells you here why. He said, I'm not ashamed to call you my brother. He says, I will declare thy name in the midst of the church. That's what we did tonight. We sung and we all proclaimed his goodness and, and gave testimony. And then he says, I got to put myself, my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. He's talking about Christ and, and us, the people of, who have been saved. But here's the, the beautiful thing. I'm going to hurry this up, get down to verse uh, 17 and 18. It behooved him. He didn't come as an angel. He didn't come as the, as the king that the Jewish people looked for. He didn't come on a white horse with a sword. He didn't come that way. He came as a man. As a baby. And he grew into a man. He came that way. Why? Why, why would he do that? It says right here that he was made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for what? Our sins. He had to come. He had to know what it felt like to be a man. He had to know what it felt like to be tempted and the Bible says that he was tempted in every way like as we are. The Bible don't even list all the temptations Christ was tempted with. It don't list all the times when someone came and tried to get him to sin. You can use your imagination because however you've been tempted, he was tempted those very same ways. Okay? So you don't just don't go into all that. And now look at verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. Listen, don't miss this. He is able to suffer them that are tempted. Because he understands your temptation. He understands your flesh. He understands when you're insulted how you feel. He understands anger. He understands you want to punch somebody in the... He understands those things. Thank God he didn't yield to them, but he understands why you do. He understands. And he's able... You know what that word sucker means? He's able to help you. He's able to sustain you. He's able to deliver you to help you to overcome these things that he was victorious over. We don't have a God that can't be reached with our infirmities. We got one that lived our infirmities and he can be reached with them. And that's what makes our Lord and our God so special. That's <coughs> what makes Jesus our Savior. And a Savior that loves us and is not ashamed of us. He may, he may hold us accountable for our sin, but he's not ashamed of a single one of us because he understands our sinful nature. Aren't you glad to have a Savior like that? Amen. Aren't you have, glad to know that you have a Savior that's up there right now. I, I love this about Jesus. He's up there right now interceding for all, every one of us and saying, Lord, Father, don't, don't destroy me. I understand. I was tempted just like they were. And Lord, if I hadn't been so close to you, they're not as close to you as I was. Forgive them. Keep them. Don't destroy them. And he stands that way between us and the wrath of God right now. That's our Lord. That's our Savior. And I praise him for that tonight. Amen. Would you stand?
let me give a testimony now. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I've been in some churches where they preach about now that you're saved, do, 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 and don't do this and do this, and a bunch of lists of do's and don'ts and everything like that. But uh, being a Christian is not, from what I've learned and everything, it's not going through life with a list of do's and don'ts. I mean, there's a lot of verses in the Bible that definitely tells us to do certain things and to not do certain things. But being a Christian is having Christ in you, glory right. and glory. You know, Amen. Just got, through, just got through the new year, just getting started. I've been in churches where uh, make a resolution. I'm going to start doing this, start doing this, stop doing so and so. Most of the time, whenever you've ever made those resolutions, if I know it was with me. Whenever I do that, man, if I lasted two or three weeks, I'd really done good. <laughs> and I finally made up my mind. I'm not going to do no more resolutions or nothing like that. I'm just going to try to live my life the best way I can and Amen. trust the Lord to help me. Amen. And that made a lot of difference right there. Absolutely. Amen. Whenever I said on my own, stop trying. Amen. To understand, I am weak, but thou art strong. Amen. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. <laughs> that should be the cry of our heart every day. Amen. I'm weak, Lord, but you're strong. You're the captain of my salvation. Thank you for not being ashamed of me. Deliver me from evil. That's a beautiful idea, a thought in it. Would you bow your head, please? These altars are open for prayer. Maybe you're here tonight and you have one of those repetitive sins in your life. One you can't seem to break that hold on you. Come on down here tonight. Get on your knees. Or sit in a chair, however you want to do it. Say, Father, Lord, Deliver me. Deliver me from this repetitive sin. Maybe nobody else knows about it, but I do, and I know you do. Father, would you just deliver me from it? Whatever it takes, Lord, to make me whole and clean, would you do? Maybe you're here and you have a trouble that you, <coughs> in certain situations, show up, you show yourself. You have trouble keeping your thoughts to yourself and you, you say things you ought not say, you gossip, you slander, you get angry, you talk about people. Y'all, that's just as big a sin as anything else. God deliver me from that. I have to pray that prayer a lot. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, not to have road rage. Seems like my biggest issue right now. God deliver me from that. <laughs> I love you, Blaine. Thank you so much, brother, for, for being here today and playing that beautiful music for us. God bless you. God bless you all. I pray you have a wonderful week. I uh, pray that I get to see you Wednesday night at 6 o'clock for Bible study, Exodus chapter 6. And, and I praise the Lord for, for being a part of a church. When I'm not here, the word of the Lord keeps me moving. Amen, right brother. Because see, it ain't about following me. It's about following Christ. And he has brought people here. It, it certainly don't make you glad. He brought people here to, to carry that baton. When one can't run with it, somebody else grabbed it and run. Praise God for what he's done here. Amen. I love y'all. Thank you for all you do and for your support and your prayers. And let's pray for one another every day. Amen. Amen. Brother Jim Boss, would you dismiss us, please? Hey Lord, we just, I'm going to come for you. Thank you for the many ways that you have blessed us way beyond what we deserve. Lord, just thank you for this little church. Thank you for the ones you brought here. Thank you for bringing us here where we can fellowship with the fellow Christians. <laughs> Lord, those who are standing in the need of prayer, whatever they need, we just ask that you reach down and touch them in the way that you see for them. Man, is a lost love, and we just ask your blessing upon them. Just be with them during this difficult time. And just lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that we need to go. Give us traveling grace back to our homes. And Lord, when the doors open again, Lord, just lay it on everybody's hearts that they need to be here. 
Yes, these things are not me. Amen, brother.